All right guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over my entire pack list for my Montana elk archery hunt in September this year. So some of the things that I've learned in the past two years trying to do this, I don't get a lot of time because I'm going from one race to the next and I only get that week to hunt in between. So my time schedule is really limited. So what I learned and the kind of hunting style that I think I like to do now after doing this a few times is I wanna stay as light and as mobile as possible to be able to chase elk. There's no sense in me backpacking 10 miles in somewhere to not find them. As much as I would love to do that, to get away from the crowds and go in for four, five, six days, I just don't have that luxury. If I have to get something down, I have to stay mobile, stay light, and be able to get in and out and shuttle meat as fast as possible. This is kind of the system that I've built that allows me to hunt from the truck but carry enough stuff in my pack that if I get on elk and I'm a couple miles, three miles, four miles out, I can stay on them for a night or two, especially if it's early in the week. I'm gonna go over all the stuff that I've packed here. And if you guys have any questions about the gear that I've packed as this video is playing, drop a comment down below, ask me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But first thing we're gonna start with is gonna be the pack because this is what carries all the load for me. So let's get into it. The pack, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important things because this is gonna be on your back almost all the time. At least it is on my back all the time when I'm out hunting. I went with the Stone Glacier Sky 5900. This pack's been great for me. It is a, a little bit of a larger pack for someone who's gonna do like a day hunts or maybe one or two nights out, but I didn't want to get it. I wanted to buy one pack that in the future, if I did start to go on some of these longer hunts, that I would have enough space. I don't want to have to own two or three packs or two or three bags. I just did the buy once, cry once, and this pack is plenty big enough for me. Some of the features and why I really like this pack is, like I said, the lid itself is removable, but you have a lot of storage, and I'm not a person who likes to have a lot of individual pockets. I'd much rather have the big bag style. On the front, there's just a big zip out pouch that you can put. Usually this is like my rain gear and my garbage and kind of just the, the stuff I want to get to real quick uh, or get rid of real quick. I like really having the option of the horseshoe zipper on the front to get into the pack and be able to load your pack or get gear out of it. And if you're one of those guys that prefers a snow cone to load your pack, you also have that option. You can really fill this thing out and go through the cone if you want to really pack this bag full. I think this pack is a really good general purpose pack and that's why I got it. On the hip belt, I have just a uh, Stone Glacier hip pouch on the side. Usually in this hip pouch, I'm carrying like an extra release, an extra mouth call. I have it here. And then on the right hip pocket, I have a Mystery Ranch water bottle holder, which holds the GSI Microlite thermos that I have really well. And I like it on my right side. All right, so now it's time to move on to the sleep system. This is probably the biggest area of improvement that I made over last year's pack going into this year. I really saved my pennies and I bought a brand new sleeping bag. The one I had last year was just a really old North Face bag. It was heavy and it just, it did an okay job and it would be a great summer bag. But with the temperature swings that I saw in Colorado from the high 20s all the way into the 80s, I needed something that maybe got in a little bit lower. Reading reviews, I settled on this Western Mountaineering Alpen Light 20 degree bag. This thing's gonna be great. It weighs half as much as that other bag does and Western Mountaineering has a long history of making really good products. So that's why I went with the bag that I chose. All right, so the sleeping pad that I have, this is the Nemo Tensor Alpine. This is his really high R value, and that's why I got this pad. Like I said before, that bag I had in the past was just an older bag, and it wasn't keeping me that warm. So I had, went with a high R value pad, and I could use this pretty much for any season, and I'm really happy that I have it. It was comfortable for me last year, didn't pop, and I think it's a really good pad in comparison. Size of a Nalgene and the pad, they're roughly about the same size. It doesn't take up too much room in the bag, and they compress down really nice. I sleep with a pillow. I've used this for the last few trips that I've had. Trekology makes this. Used it for the last few trips, and honestly, it's done well. It doesn't, it still holds air. It's comfortable. It fits in the hood of the sleeping bag. So for my ground cloth, this is just on, it's 
a piece of Tyvek uh, from when I did the side of my house. I just have a piece cut that is just big enough to fit under my tent. I don't really use this a lot, honestly. This kind of lays in the bottom of my pack, but this is also good if you do get an animal on the ground to be able to lay out, to lay meat on, to keep it off the ground and keep it away from the dirt. So the tent, I bought a Stone Glacier Sky Air ULT. This is a tarp tent. Uh, this thing is really light. It's easy to set up and this is just a great backpacking tent. It compresses down really light. This is the tarp, the vestibule, and the mesh liner. The mesh liner has like a bathtub floor to it. That's why I don't use this Tyvek a lot. But if I really wanted to go ultra light, I could get rid of the mesh liner. But me personally, I just, I like to have it. I like to keep the bugs off of me if I can. I have a bag of steaks for it. Um, I have some of the Stone Glacier steaks. I have some MSR groundhog steaks. I probably have more steaks in here than I actually use, but these are one of those things that tend to get left behind, uh, get lost. So having a few more than you need is, in my opinion, it's a good idea. And all of this, when I get ready to pack this into my pack, all of this goes into this Stone Glacier dry bag. Um, I think it's called the dry cell. It's pretty big, but I like to keep I want to keep my sleeping bag as dry as possible. I don't particularly like using a stuff sack, so that's why I have this dry bag. So I'm gonna stuff all this stuff into the dry bag, and this is the first thing that's gonna go into the bottom of my pack every morning when I'm getting ready to go. So the first thing I do, like I said, is I'll stuff all of this into this load cell or this dry bag, and I'll start with the sleeping bag. Next, I'll follow up with my tent all rolled up, sleeping pad. Usually this pillow is inside the sleeping bag anyways. I usually don't take it out. All right, so the next order of business is going to be the actual clothes that I'm going to wear every day. This is pretty much what I'm gonna start every day with and layer accordingly. And we're gonna start from the ground up. These are the boots that I'm gonna be wearing this year. These are the Hanwag Macri Trex GTXs. These are a nice, really light boot, and I've been running these for a few weeks now, testing them, doing some test hikes, and I really do like them. So these are an uninsulated boot, and I think these are gonna be great, especially through that September archery elk hunt. So the socks that I'm gonna wear, these are the Farm to Feet Damascus Merino sock. They wicked enough sweat, even though I was sweating in my feet last year, I didn't get any blisters. So I'm gonna to continue to run these socks. I do like them. And just in case, I don't know if I'm gonna wear these yet or not. This is just a pair of Merino liners. If I start to get hot spots before I get a blister, I'll stop, take my socks off and put a pair of liners inside of my socks. That's always done a really good job for me for mitigating blisters is running a liner, especially if I do start to get some hot spots, especially on my heel. Putting a pair of liner socks on usually cleans that up. For clothes, of course, I got an HHA hat that I'm gonna wear this year. This marsupial gear belt, I got this last year and hunted with it, and this thing's awesome. It's got some stretch and some give to it, so you can put it down a little tighter than you need, and then when you cinch your pack on and cinch the hip belt up, the, this belt doesn't do the big bunching or getting in the way of your hip belt. So that's why I really like this marsupial gear belt. I run Saks underwear. This is what I wear at the racetrack all the time when it's hot out. And this is what I wear when I'm hunting. One pair of underwear will get me through the entire week. For my top, this is gonna be the core lightweight hoodie. This is pretty much the base starting spot that I'm gonna hunt every morning in if it's really hot out. This keeps me cool enough. It wicks enough moisture. Worn this in the turkey season, deer season elk season last year this is pretty much one of my go-to pieces and i've absolutely abused this and it just keeps taking it and that's why i'm going to continue to wear it new pants for this year these are the sitka apex pants i ran the ascent pants last year and like i said with the temperatures ranging from the high 20s all the way up into the 80s i got really cold on some of those days with those ascent pants they just didn't do enough to cut the wind and just keep me warm so I went with a slightly heavier pant this year in the Apex pant, and I think this is gonna be really good. And most mornings, this at least I did last year, I started the day off wearing a pair of gaiters. 
just to keep the bottom of my pants dry. Because if you know, if you've walked in enough brush or wet grass, as soon as you get the bottom of your pants wet, you end up getting the tops of your socks wet. And then that moisture drips down through the sock into your feet and gets your feet wet. Once your feet get wet, that's when you start really having some issue with blisters and some foot problems. So for me, I like to wear gaiters, especially to start the morning off, just to keep my pant legs dry. So these are the uh, Outdoor Research Gaiters, they're Gore-Tex. So these are the clothes that I'm pretty much gonna start every day with. This is gonna be my base system, my base setup. And then according to the temperatures or the weather, I will layer up on top of that. All right, so the next set of clothing gear that I have, this is gonna be the gear or the clothes that I have packed into my pack that is gonna be the stuff that I'm going to interchange in and out depending on the weather. So I like to carry an extra pair of really thick wool socks for two reasons. A, if you're sleeping at night when you don't have your boots on, if you wanna take your socks off that you've been wearing all day to just start to dry them out, having a nice pair of comfortable socks to change in and out of just to sleep in, for me has always been kind of that like morale booster. It's been good, I like it. And these can also double as a pair of stocking socks. So if you're going in on a stock on the midday and you wanna take your boots off, having an extra pair of thick wool socks to put on just to keep from punctures in your feet or to be sneaky with, these are great just to have. So these will go into my pack. They may or may not come out, but hopefully they come out for a stock and not because I'm too cold. I have just a beanie if it gets cold out at night and early in the mornings kind of packing up just trying to stay as warm as possible a pair of Sitka Traverse gloves these are great just to uh, like I said get it, get going in the morning just to keep your fingers warm or at night or if it's really windy when you're glassing so if it does get cold especially in the morning the next piece of gear that I'll put on is going to be this Sitka heavyweight hoodie this is the uh, next step up from the lightweight it's got some waffling on the inside that keeps me warm. This was a piece last year that I found myself wearing a lot more than I thought I was going to. I pretty much wore this three or four out of the five days that I hunted Colorado. Very comfortable, very quiet, easy to move around in. And this will always come with me. This is kind of one of those baseline pieces that comes with me on every hunt. And a new piece of gear that I'm trying out this year. This is the Sitka kelvin active hoodie i kind of got this because there was some mornings where i was just too cold with the heavyweight but if i put a puffy on and started to move around i kind of got too hot so this was kind of that gap piece to fill in in the middle where if it's a little chilly when you get going you can get going with this on with your pack and this i wore this in turkey season this year and on those, some of those cold mornings once i got up and moving this really did a good job of keeping me warm, but not too warm and cutting just enough cold where I wasn't cold. So, so when it comes to rain gear, I kind of go as minimalist on the rain gear as I can. I want just enough gear to get me back to the truck. I don't need gear that I'm going to hunt in when it's raining because I'm probably not going to be doing too much hunting, especially if it is downpouring. I'm going to try to seek shelter and just wait it out. I'm not hunting in the Pacific Northwest, so rain gear for me is not a high priority, but it is at least something that I have with me in case I need it. This is the Sitka Flash Pullover. This has been one of those pieces I picked up on a sale and it's DWR treated. Just getting through a rain shower, this works great. It's easy to pull over and it'll keep you dry. Rain pants, these are just a pair of no brand rain pants that I have. Uh, I wear these at the racetrack when it's raining, so. They do enough, like I said, to keep you dry, to get out of the rain. But if you're gonna be hunting in the rain, I wouldn't recommend these. But for me, they sit in my pack, they're pretty lightweight, they don't take up a lot of room, and it's worth having them. Puffy clothes. This is something that I kind of am really glad I brought last year. It was one of those pieces that I was kind of, maybe I bring, maybe I don't bring, but bringing them, I was really excited that I did bring them. These are both from First Light. These are the First Light, I believe, Uncompadre puffy pants. And I really like these, they're full zip on the side, so you don't need to take your boots off to get in and out of them, which for me is a huge plus. And if you get a little hot in them, you can unzip the sides down and just dump some heat, but still have them on. So if you're glassing, you're gonna stay warm. In, in camp at night, you're gonna stay warm with them. And for my puffy jacket, this is the First Light Serious jacket. This jacket is pretty light. This is pretty much a morning or an evening jacket. It's just light enough that if I layer with all my other stuff, 
I should be plenty warm. So I wanted to carry something just to have, but not something that was like a full on down puffy jacket for my September hunt. This also packs up really small into one of these pockets. And it doesn't take up too much room in the pack. These are all the gear and clothes that I'm going to be packing into my pack on top of my sleep system. And this is just kind of the stuff that if I need to get to it, I can, but it's not necessarily stuff that I'm gonna wear all the time. The Sitka pullover, the rain gear, this is gonna go in this front pouch, this horseshoe pouch, in case I do need it. If it does start to rain really fast, I can get to it. I don't have to dig through my whole pack. These socks and gloves and beanie are all gonna go in this very front pouch. They're just stuff I can get to. If it does get cold, I can get to it really fast and I don't have to dig through everything to get there. Okay, now moving on to optics. I don't carry a lot, especially in this September elk hunt. I'm not carrying a spotting scope and a tripod. I'm just really going for the first legal bull that I can kill, so I don't need a lot. I had this marsupial gear enclosed bino pouch. This is a medium and it fits a pair of Vortex UHD 10 by 50s. And these are pretty much the only optics that I'm gonna have. I do have the stud mount on the front for the post on my monopod that my camera is set up on right now. I also have the adapter for Vortex, so I can mount these on the monopod that I'm going to bring. My camera gear is kind of dual purpose for this optic setup. So having that in case I want to sit there and glass over a large area with these binoculars, these would be plenty enough to glass with and having that monopod and just a way to attach them. It's kind of a dual purpose role for me. And that's pretty much the extent of the glass that I'm bringing on this trip. The only other piece that I'm bringing for optics is going to be this Leupold Full Draw RX4 rangefinder. This rangefinder is pretty much built for the archer in mind. And I absolutely love this, being able to put your inputs from your arrow and your bow, and it gives you the exact accurate yardage and a max trajectory from your arrow flight. So pretty much it's just rangefinder, binoculars, and that's all I'm really gonna have for optics on this trip. So on this bino harness pouch in the left-hand side pocket, I'm gonna have a wind checker on me. And in the right-hand side pocket is where my archery release goes, at least my primary one. This is where I like to keep it because it's easy to get it out. It's right-handed, everything stays tucked in real close to me. So that's why I like to keep it in here instead of strapping it onto my wrist. I also carry a foam pad. This was an old sleeping pad that I have cut into a smaller size. And this is just something to sit on if I'm going to be glassing and to put in front of my tent just to get in and out of and drag as less, less crap into my tent as possible. This thing just straps onto the bottom of my pack, lives there, and it's really good because I'm not bringing a chair. So just something soft to sit on at night is good to have. So moving on to more gear that's gonna be packed into my bag. This is my kill kit. It's a Mystery Ranch just zipper bag that I picked up to keep everything nice and contained in. And we're gonna open this up pull everything out. I run uh, caribou gear game bags. These are five of the elk size ones. I don't plan on boning my meat out in the field. I will carry it boned in. So that's why I have the slightly bigger bags. A lot of guys will go with a smaller bag, but I prefer just to run the bigger bags to make sure I have enough room. And I want to do as least meat care in the field as possible. I just want to get it down, get it off the animal and get it out as fast as I can. For knives, this is something where I've added this year. These are two goat knives. This is the Ibex with the replaceable blades. This is something that I didn't carry last year, but I'm going to carry this year. Last year I had a replaceable blade knife at the truck in case I needed to cape anything out. I could get it, but this was on sale, so I picked one up. This weighs next to nothing, so that's why I'm bringing it with me this year. I also have the goat carbon knife that I had I used last year. I've cut a few deer up with this before and this thing worked really good. I prefer a fixed blade, especially for getting in and cutting the meat off of the animal because I am not real gentle. I wanna be able to use that blade and leverage it if I need to. So I prefer a fixed blade just to get the meat off of the animal and get it broken down into manageable sizes. So I always carry a work sharp knife sharpener. This is just the basic, it's pretty cheap model 
and this is just to put with the ceramic on it. It'll just keep the sharp edge on that blade. So I keep this in my kill kit along with my tags, a Sharpie to fill out my tag, an extra Sharpie in case that Sharpie doesn't work, two pairs of, uh, or a pair of black gloves in case I need those. This is the slick cord. It's, I don't remember what exactly this cord is, but this is a, a more than enough that I need. I should probably cut some, probably about half of this off, but this is to be able to hang that game meat, hang those bags while I'm shuttling meat back and forth, just to get it to air out and get it cooled as fast as possible. I have some electrical tape, and this is to tape my tag onto my, the antlers of the animal. And if I do cut myself, this is a quick Band-Aid fix. I can't tell you how many times I've used duct tape or electrical tape, especially working in racing, just to patch myself up real quick to continue to work. So this multi-purpose. And I have some flagging tape. So if I need to flag a trail, uh, flag where my meat's at, I can do that. And all of this just lives in this little Mystery Ranch zip pouch. And if I need any of it, it all comes out together and it's all supposed to be used together. So throw this into the pack. This just kind of goes in wherever it can. Just try to tuck it down one of the sides or in the front. I just try to cram it in there as far as I can. So when it comes to electronics on this trip and illumination, I carry a few different options with me and they're most of them are just backups. But my primary headlamp is gonna be this black diamond. I believe this is a 350 lumen headlamp. And this thing works great, it's light. It doesn't go through batteries that fast. So I just have another Petzl light here. It carries three batteries. So this just lives kind of in my pack somewhere in the hood, just to, in case I need another headlamp and this one dies on me or I lose it, I have a backup headlamp. In the tent, this is a piece that I picked up last year that I was actually very happy with. This is a crush light from Goal Zero and this thing just kind of folds out and I was able last year to hang this up on the inside of my tent and it gave me enough illumination in there where I can kind of just be able to work and get everything where I needed to be before I go to bed. In this pouch, I have an anchor uh, battery pack. This does more than enough charges for I need for my cell phone. I don't know how big it is, but this has enough charges to do my cell phone and I have cords for all my different camera gear and cell phone. Last year, this thing lasted more than a week. So I have all the confidence in the world that this is gonna be enough battery juice, especially if I'm not spending five days out in the woods. I'll do most of my charging at the vehicle, but if I am out there and I need to charge, I have something to charge with. And last but not least for electronics, this is a Garmin InReach Mini. It's important for me to stay connected to my family and my wife. So I have this InReach Mini just in case, just so I can stay in touch with her and in case something does go wrong because I'm going to be by myself, having a way to communicate to the outside world if I'm out of cell service is a must. It's a really good piece to have, especially if you're going by yourself. And piggybacking off of the electronics or the illumination side of my gear, this is gonna be the other stuff that's gonna live in the hood or the lid of my pack. This is a first aid kit. Uh, it's something that I've just put together with stuff that I know how to use, um, some basic meds. If I get an upset stomach or diarrhea, just some stuff to get me through the trip uh, until I can get back home. There's nothing in here that I don't know how to use. Uh, I don't carry sutures. I don't carry any of that kind of stuff. I just carry the stuff to be able to do basic first aid and keep myself alive or keep whoever I'm with out of trouble until paramedics or someone more skilled gets there. So. I like it in this red pouch because nothing else in my bag is this color red, except for that sleeping pad or sleeping bag, but it's really easy to get to. Anyone who I'm hunting with knows where this is at. And like I said, it's red. It says lifeline on it. So big first aid kit. Wet wipes. I'm not a toilet paper guy. I'm a wet wipe guy. I have changed. They're just, they're better. Yeah. This is kind of my basic or this is like my utility pouch. This kind of carries all the extra crap that I have that doesn't really have a home. So this backup headlamp, this usually lives in here along with an extra lighter. I also have an extra lighter in my first aid kit. I have my Vortex mount for my monopod, an extra cow call, a few extra reeds, some extra batteries floating in here. 
uh, just like a dude wipe shower in case I get really, really raunchy and, you know, you need to clean off. I got one of these if I need to wipe down. And a rain pack fly for my pack. If it does get absolutely torrential downpour, I can get this out just to keep as much of my gear dry as possible. But this usually doesn't get used. So that's why it kind of lives in this miscellaneous pouch. This miscellaneous pouch lives in this little horseshoe with the rest of the gear, like the beanie and rain jacket. And all of this stuff, like my first aid kit, my wipes, battery charger, headlamp, and this crush lantern, these all are gonna live within the hood or the lid. This inReach Mini will go on my bino harness, keep it close, keep it communicated with the sky. That's why I like to keep it. I touched on calls, uh, bugle tube, I carry this with me because it is a archery elk hunt in September. And the reeds that I carry is this uh, Maverick, this red one. This one works well for me. I can cow call good with it. I can bugle half-ass okay with it, I think. Um, I can get bulls to respond, but this is where I carry, and this kind of lives in the front of this marsupial gear pouch. And if I lose it, like I said, in my miscellaneous pouch, I have two or three more, as well as an external cow call in case I lose everything. So moving on to the water filtration system and the uh, kitchen side of the gear that I'm bringing. I bring this jet boil. I really like this. It's probably a little overkill, but everything fits inside of it and it stays contained and that's why I really like it. So I have this jet boil. I carry a microfiber cloth with my fuel inside of it. If you just run this fuel canister inside of the cup, it rattles a little bit. So I have just a cheap microfiber cloth that I stick the fuel in and then push it down in and it keeps it really contained and everything stays quiet. There's no rattle. It's also a nice rag to wipe things out if you need to, if you get food, whatever. It's just nice to have a little rag to wipe your face with. This was a uh, pouch I made out of some packing material for my freeze dried meals. It just keeps them warm. And if, especially if it's chilly at night, having a nice warm meal that fully dehydrate or rehydrates itself. I've had some half assed rehydrated meals and they suck. So this pouch makes sure that that water stays hot and everything fully rehydrates. So I keep that and inside of this pouch, I have just the, this is a Sea to Summit long spoon. And this works great, especially if you're eating those dehydrated meals. So for water, I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna run yet, but it's gonna be one of these two options. So I'm gonna go over both of them right now. Option number one is do what I did last year. And I'm going to run a, this GSI 1000 milliliter Microlite thermos. Keeps water cold, keeps liquids hot. So when I do my coffee in the morning, I don't have to drink it all right away. I can just kind of sip on it throughout the morning but it keeps the cold water that I get out of the streams nice and cold. And last year I carried a hydro pack. This was pretty much my dirty bag. I would put water in this that needed to be filtered going forward. So this is a three liter bag. The two filtration options that I had, this was a bee free filter that actually screws on to the top of this hydro pack. So if I got some nasty water, I could fill this up and I could at least filter it with the the, the micron filter that's in these containers. But my primary source of filtering was a SteriPen. I've had this for a while and I've used it and I've had no problems with it. It works well in this bottle with this wide mouth or like a Nalgene. It works well to stir in. So this is the system that I ran last year for my water and it worked well. I had no problems. The only thing you have to be careful is with these micron filters you have to make sure they do not freeze because if they do freeze, they will crack. So if I saw the temperature was gonna get below 40 degrees at night, I would put the filter in this baggie and bring this into my sleeping bag with me with some of the other gear that I have like batteries to keep them warm so they don't die or crack. So make sure you keep these nice and warm or not frozen. So the second option, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna do this yet, is I'm going to lose the pouch and lose the 
filter, use my SteriPen as a backup to my bottle, but I'm gonna run a bladder. And when I run this bladder, I'm actually going to get the drops to treat this water. I don't have the drops yet, but this is the other system that I'm, I'm thinking about running. I've not run a bladder in a long time on hikes because what ends up happening is I go through my water too fast. It's not a bad thing to be drinking your water, but it's a bad thing to be hammering through your water because if you don't know when you're gonna get it. So back to the pack. In terms of packing this, I put this water stuff in the lid of my pouch. The stove goes in the top. The bag goes in the top as well. And my extra water bladder, when I had this filled up, I laid it across the top of my pack. I didn't want to put this down in my pack and put as much weight on it as possible. I get that if it leaks, it's going to leak all over my gear, but I was kind of, I didn't want to put excess weight on it to possibly pop it or put a leak in it whole. So I usually pack this right on the very top. If I'm going to run this bladder, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna run it on the top. There is a exit hole in this pack to pull a hose through. So that's where it's gonna live, is gonna be on the top of the pack inside the main pouch. This GSI water bottle lives right on this hip pouch. So that's pretty much all the gear. Trekking poles. These are a pair of Sissy Sticks Elites. Uh, I got these when they first came out. I have some duct tape wrapped on both of them, just in case you don't know what you're gonna need it for. I need these for two reasons. A, if I'm gonna be packing out with heavy load, I prefer to have a little extra balance, but I also need these for my tent. So one in the front, one in the back. They work well and they just live in the side pouch of my pack. All right, so let's get a total weight on this pack. This is everything in here minus food and water. This is all the gear that I'm gonna bring. Weighs I'm at zero. Total pack weight. Right at 25 pounds. So 25 pounds with all the gear minus food and water and camera gear. I think last year when I was loaded out with a gallon of water, four days worth of food, and all my camera gear, I wanna say it was right around 46 pounds. I also could save some weight in some areas, I get it, but for me, this is just this is just fine. I'll shed a few of these things if I'm gonna go in for just the day and just day pack it. I'll probably get rid of all the sleep stuff in the bottom and just pretty much run just one day of food, water, something to eat, all right, so now that we have gone over all the gear in the bag, the clothes I'm gonna wear, and the gear that I'm gonna bring, let's move on to the weapon of the hunt. This is an archery elk hunt, so let's go over the bow setup and arrow setup. All right, so the weapon setup that I'm gonna be bringing on this trip, it is an archery elk hunt, so I'm bringing my bow. This is my Matthews V3X33. This bow has been amazing since I got it. It shoots really nice. The draw cycle is nice on it. It's just, it's probably been one of my favorite shooting bows that I've ever owned. Uh, a lot of guys will run these engaged limb legs. I do not. These are pretty much just my bow stand during the week. So we'll go over some of the stuff that I have set up on this right now. I'm going to run a front and a back bar system this year. Uh, I've been shooting this a lot recently this year and I absolutely love it. The bow just holds really, really nice for me. This is a 15 inch B Stinger micro hex bar on the front with an eight inch bar on the back. I'm carrying two ounces of weight in the front and seven ounces of weight in the back. This is on a shrewd back bar setup and it's about four degrees and four and a half degrees down. So four degrees out, four and a half degrees down. I am running the Matthews one piece quiver and I will hunt with this on my bow but right now I don't have any arrows in it because I haven't finished building them yet. But this is gonna be the quiver that I'm going to run. I'm going to run it on the bow. Shooting a Hamsky Epsilon Rest. The sight I'm shooting this year is also new. This is gonna be an HHA Tetra Max. I'm gonna to continue to run a multi-pin slider 
So my 20, 30, 40, 50, and then my 50 pin will slide to whatever, 50 to 100. I don't see myself taking 100 yard shots, but having that range in case I need to get a follow-up shot is good to know the exact yardage. I'm running a Hamski uh, Raptor peep on it. Really like these peeps, even when they get twisted sideways, it still looks like you have a great sight picture on it. Threads bow strings, and that's about it for the bow. We'll move on to the arrow. So the arrow that I'm gonna be running for hunting season this year, this is the Black Eagle X Impact 250 spine. I'm gonna run 210 grains of point weight in the front of this. Right now, these are the Iron Will 135 grain Snyder cores. With this micro diameter arrow, I really like the Snyder core system that Aaron Snyder and Iron Will have put together for these broadheads. So this whole system gets glued into the shaft and it, I don't have to worry about it unscrewing or coming loose. So this is 135 grain Snyder core, single double bevel iron wheel broadhead with a 25 grain shot collar and a 50 grain hit insert behind it. So it comes out to be a total of 210 grains of nose weight, 250 spine shaft can handle all of that. It's a three fletch. This arrow weight comes out to be 520 grains. Shooting out of a 77 and a half pound bow, this thing absolutely flies and hammers. All right, guys, so that is going to conclude my pack list for my archery elk hunt in Montana this year. If you guys have any questions about my bow setup or the gear that I'm bringing, drop a comment down below. I believe with this system, I can move fast and light. I don't have to bring everything with me. I can camp from the truck, but I also have the option of carrying that tent and that light sleeping bag and be able to stay out for a night or two. So if you guys have any questions, like I said, drop them down below, smash that like button. Hopefully we'll see you out in the field, but until next time, I'm Jeff Cordero and we'll check you out on the next video.